Okay. Okay. So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Céline Bardet, and though I'm French, I apologize, I will speak in English because my presentation has been made in English. Uh, first of all, I wanted to thank you, Mrs. Shidiak. Yeah? Okay. It's just that I, I did my... I think I will keep in English. Are, are we... Fine. Okay. Um, so thank you very much. It's my first time here. I heard about this conference. I have many friends who came and spoke here. So I'm very honored. Uh, so thank you. Thank you so much. Um, the second thing I wanted to say, I've listened to everyone today, I found everything very, very interesting. And I wanted to um, kind of outline how brave, uh, bold, or I don't know how to put that, but it is to come up with the topic I'm going to address today, uh, which is sexual violence in conflict and fragile environment. We're talking about women empowerment. Um, it was decided to address this topic and that's why I was contacted to come and talk to you uh, today. I'm very uh, happy about that, I have to say, because it's a topic difficult to, uh, to address. I'll try to see if that works. Can we? Okay, so waiting for that. So um, I'm going to give a kind of a very, um, try to be very short and, and global presentation of this and then there will be this panel by um, the great panelist talking about that. I don't know if it's working. Yeah? Uh, just a few words about me. Uh, so I'm a lawyer. I wanted to tell you how comes that I decided to take this topic um, on my shoulder. Uh, I'm a war crime specialist. I'm a lawyer. I'm an international criminal investigator. I've been doing that for the past 20 years. Um, I heard today, yeah? Oh, okay, thank you. Um, I found it uh, very interesting to hear about women and sometimes, you know, what we call men job, or I don't know how to qualify that, have been working on security and justice in post-conflict and conflict context. I'm spending almost 80% of my time on the ground. And what I see in many countries is that when it comes to police and prosecution, intelligence, all these people, most of them are men. So um, most of the time they're very surprised to see uh, a woman coming in on uh, this topic. And little by little, uh, I realized that there was uh, a big, big issue that was not really uh, addressed and being quite silent, and it was sexual violence in conflict. I spent almost 10 years in the Balkans you know that the conflict in the former Yugoslavia, there are lots of uh, rape that have been committed. Uh, when I arrived there in 2004, it was still a taboo. Uh, many women didn't talk about that. So this is the moment when I thought, okay, we need uh, to try and do something about that. In 2008, I conducted the first trial in Bosnia that qualified rape as a war crime. Um, I started my career at the ICTY, the International Criminal uh, Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. And rapidly, I had the feeling that I would not understand uh, what is really justice, what is a war crime, what are international crimes, if I wouldn't go on the field. So after a few years, I left the ICTY, and I spent many days working on mainly tracking war criminals. 
And then, after these 10 years in the Balkan, I started to work in a different country, uh, Libya, and I want to say something about what you said, because I, <laughs> I was very interested. DRC, lots of country. But uh, I wanted to show you this because in 2014, this is what happened. We are not weapons of war. So while in Balkan, I realized that there were so many still uh, victims that were not talking about sexual violence, that didn't say anything, and I'm talking about 10, 15 years after the conflict finished, okay? And then in 2010, I arrived in Libya. And I want to say a few words about that because this country that I didn't know before, uh, I arrived at a period of time just before uh, Gaddafi was still there, and then, you know, all this thing happened in 2011. I spent almost three years in Libya, and, I have cont and I'm continuing to work on Libya. But then I realized in Libya that sexual violence was also a big issue, and nobody was talking about that during Gaddafi time, during what we call the revolution, and then after. So then I started to think, okay, we have a problem with that. Why, you know, this is not covered? Why is it so difficult to address? And then in 2014, I decided to fund this NGO that started actually with an international campaign. That's why it has his name that is a bit complicated. <laughs> we are not weapons of war, but I decided to keep the name because at the beginning it was a campaign. I'm not a weapon of war. So I funded it, and um, again, I'm looking at sexual violence from an international crime perspective, okay? I'm not a specialist on sexual violence in general. I have never had, to be honest, specific interest on this question, but then when I realized the scope and the situation, and that nothing was really done to respond to the needs of the people, then I decided to set up this NGO. The other reason is I'm French, despite some speaking English. I'm so ashamed for my country. Uh, but it's easier because then I can follow my presentation. Um, but you know, in France at the time, even in 2013, 2014, the media, for example, was not really talking about sexual violence in conflict. So I thought, okay, I'm going to fund this NGO, I'm going to base it in Paris, and uh, the first thing I start was, okay, we need to talk more about that. We need the media to talk about it, and we need them to talk about it properly. Uh, this is a map that we are still updated uh, of the region where rape is, is or has been used as a tool of war. This is huge. Okay? Uh, the question is, what do we know about sexual violence in conflict? And this is the second, second reason why I got really interested in that. Because I realized that there were lots of difficulty to understand it. Uh, there were lots of misconception. Uh, lots of people who were not understanding uh, what is uh, sexual violence when it's, it is being used as a tool. Is he? <laughs> this is my power, okay? So, uh, are you okay? <laughs> okay, so, um, and as I said, the need to address uh, the trauma, the psychosocial needs, the economic needs, and the legal uh, services uh, for the survivor. I realize also that until up to date, there is no proper global study on sexual violence in conflict. We have numbers, lots of figures that come up that most of the time many people repeat, but if you ask them, where did you get this number, they will tell you, oh yeah, I read it there. There is no sourced evidence on the scope of sexual violence in conflict and fragile environment. No real figures, wrong perception. So my NGO is launching um, uh, the first global study, I will tell you a little bit more about that, uh, on sexual violence in fragile environment. Then when I talk about misconception is, okay, 
Many people are asking, is rape in war a new phenomenon? Of course it's not, but it has been evolving uh, all along you know, the time. And for me, one of the turn has been the 90s with the conflict in Bosnia and Rwanda, where rape has been used as an ethnic cleansing tool, uh, element of genocide in Rwanda. So this is what uh, we are talking about. This has nothing to do with sexual pulsion, and I think we need to repeat it more and more, and that's actually applied for any form of sexual violence, okay? Sexual violence has nothing to do with sex or desire or anything else. It's a matter of power, and that's it. So um, how do we define uh, rape uh, in war? Most of the time it is never isolated. It is most of the time a tool, well sought, planned, organized, and I've seen it that in many countries, and Libya in particular. And it has uh, specific objectives. So the difference, so to speak, between the sexual violence that we encounter in, unfortunately, day-to-day -day lives, and when it becomes a tool, it's because it has an objective. It is here to humiliate, to terrorize. It can be used as a political uh, tool of, uh, you know, of oppression. Uh, it can be used for economic uh, reason. It can be used for ethnic cleansing uh, as an element of genocide. It has different objectives. Uh, and this is also something that we need to understand if we want to understand what we're talking about. Uh, this is the perfect crime because it's cheap, it's silent, nobody wants to talk about it, there's a huge taboo and stigma in society. Uh, it impacts on the victim, but also on all the, you know, um, uh, the family, the community, the, all, the, the whole society. That's why this tool is very powerful and actually, if I may say, very smart. It's a tool used also to spread disease. We've seen it uh, in many countries. Uh, it creates dramatic physical injury, but also, you know, um, uh, trauma. And there is a strong impunity when it comes to justice because it's ever, ever very difficult to prosecute it. So basically, uh, this phenomenon is spreading and we have little uh, impact uh, to fight against it. Rape is a tactic that has also multiple consequences. Uh, it creates displacement. This is, uh, can be one of the reasons for population to leave. Uh, it participates to demographic uh, de de decrease. It destroys the economic certain sector, and I will say a few words about that later because I found it very interesting when we were talking about economic empowerment, and especially when it comes to survivor of sexual violence. As I said, it destroys the social tissue and then the issue of the children born from rape. Here also, there is a huge taboo about it. Again, no figures. Many of them are abandoned, but some of them also are raised by their mother. I mean, actually, a lot of them, more than we know. Uh, what is the story of these children? How do we address that? How do we help them in order to be able to integrate society like any other children? Uh, my NGO is also working on, uh, on that, and personally, and, and the position of my NGO is to consider children born from rape as direct victim, like the person who has been uh, raped. So, uh, we are not weapon of war, it's functioning actually like a startup. We are a very small organization, a newborn baby organization, and we have focused our three years of development on technology. And this is where I'm going to cross with all the discussion I heard today. Because as a lawyer and international criminal investigator, I've been working, uh, opening mass grave, you know, really, that was my job. And then all of a sudden, I discovered uh, companies and we partner with a tech company and I started to interact with the world of business, which, uh, which was, you know, totally unknown to me, private sector. Uh, 
Uh, and I found that uh, very interesting. We also decided to use at a very early stage means of communication to engage in a different manner than the usual one to talk about sexual violence in conflict. I gave te TED talk and this has really impact a lot. Uh, we uh, have a movie uh, during three years, Cécile Allegra, who is a dire uh, movie director, who won the equivalent of Pul Pul Pulitzer Prize, has followed uh, me uh, and the work I'm doing with Libyan. Uh, I want to say a few words about that because um, as in 2014 in Libya, we discover also the spreading of rape against men. And this is something I wanted to outline because here today we're talking about women and etc. Women are the most, uh, as the majority of the victim of sexual violence, if anything, because they are the most vulnerable part of the population during conflict or chaotic situation. But sexual violence is a tool, and this is very important for me that everybody understand that. Uh, as of 92, the professor Sheriff Basuni was already talking when he was in Bosnia about a neutral gender approach to sexual violence. This is how I approach it. Uh, in Libya, there are many men victims of rape, and this is used to destroy uh, men. And you know, in Libya, the, the men have uh, the place in society. They are the political representative. They are the social uh, leader of the family, of the community. They are the tribal chief. They have all this power. If you want to destroy your opponent, you do that. And then it's, it's over. It's very, very effective. But it's happening in Syria, it's happening in Uganda, it's happening in many countries regarding men. Uh, so this movie, sorry, uh, has been done. It's about that. It's the first time men are tes uh, testifying, I mean, in front of a camera about it. We are working on that. Uh, and we won uh, many prizes with this movie, and it has a huge impact, you know, because it was the first time that this part of the world uh, and men, victims of, of uh, rape in, a, in conflict, were really talking about it. And so we are not weapon of war, it's about raising awareness, as I said, lots of advocacy, and we developed the backup. We have a program called Foster Survivor, and I was listening to all the also intervention. What we do is that we support survivors, uh, including where, um, how to put that, uh, to, in economic empowerment, but not only. It's like, I always believe that we shouldn't look at people as victim all the time, and most of the time that's what we do. And the, the, the survivor I meet on the ground in many countries, you should see them, because they are badass. They are people with dignity, they are people with power, and they want to get back to their life. And they don't want to spend their time talking about what happened to them all the time. They want to get back to their life. And it's very difficult because you have the stigma. Most of the time when it comes to women, they are rejected by their family and they, they find themselves alone. So we are partnering with companies, with private people, and we do kind of form of spo no sponsorship. I don't know how to put that, but we accompany individual projects of women also of men, survivor, and we also accompany children born from rape. You know, we ensure that they go to school and we help them to realize the, the dream they have and etc. What we did, and I go very quick on that, is we developed this uh, technology. Uh, the backup is a mobile, uh, is a uh, mobile uh, web mobile site. I don't know how to put that correctly. It's like an application. It's looked like this, but it's totally encrypted. And the idea is that we can spread that through telephone, um, um, tablet, computer, every uh, any device, and anyone can connect. Okay and identify himself as a survivor. And what we do is that when we identify people, we, we go to them and we provide them access to services. 
and we centralize information and we work on that to uh, conduct a judicial uh, process. So this backup has been presented to, uh, in France to Brigitte Macron. Uh, we won many prizes. At the moment I'm speaking to you, this is uh, in Paris. So I was uh, awarded Remarkable Women in Technology, which is very funny because I don't know anything about technology. But I was very interested to see how you know, technology can help us to accelerate system and respond to needs. The last thing in two minutes I wanted to tell you is that the 26th and 27th of March, um, in Luxembourg, we have decided, together with Denis Mukwege, who got the you know, Nobel Peace Prize, to uh, co-organize a conference uh, at the initiative of the Grand Duchess of Luxembourg. And this conference is very important because for the first time, survivors will be at the center of the conference. They will be there, they will be survivors from 50, um, more than 50 survivors coming to this conference from I think 15 or 16 countries different. Uh, the representative of the Mukwege Foundation will certainly talk about it in the panel. And uh, we want to innovate, we want to give voice to survivor, and I think it's very, very important that we do, because this way we change and shift the system and allow them to tell us what they went through, what they want, what they need, how do they need it, and what they want to do now with their future. So the last thing is that this is going on. Uh, this has started a few uh, days uh, ago. Stand up with Survivor. You, can, you will see on Twitter and Facebook and everything. You can have that, take a picture of that. Uh, please, if you, if you are, of course, uh, you want to do it, please do it. Because we want to have a great number of people all over, around the world doing this and we're gonna um, publish that on 26 and 27 of March and this is saying yeah we all stand with survivors they will be there at this uh, forum and we need to show them that we are together with them and that we want them to be empowered and that we want them to become actor of change and not victims anymore because this is what they want thank you very much <laughs> sorry تحضيرا لاخر بانل رح نشوف مشهد مسرحي ماخوذ من الواقع بيحكي عن العنف الجنسي يلي بيصير تحديدا خلال الحروب والصراعات المسلحه تم اعداد هالمسرحيه بتعاون ما بين هيئه الامم المتحده للمراه وجمعيه بسمه وزيتونه يلي رح بيقدموا لنا هلا المشهد المسرحي واكيد بنذكر بانه الصبايا يلي عم بيكون